Hello. Now that we, uh, we talked about Ohm's law, uh, vehicles IR, we're gonna, and we did uh, a simple circuit where we had only one resistor, some wires and a battery, maybe a switch. Now we're gonna talk about a uh, combination of, of resistors. And there are two ways, I mean, there are two, uh, two things we're gonna do here. We're gonna do series circuits, meaning like when the resistors are one after the other, and there is only one path for the current to flow. So, so here's my battery, that's my voltage source. I'll have a resistor here, maybe a resistor here, and maybe a resistor here. Okay, so I'm gonna call this uh, R1, R2, R R3. And maybe I'll give them some values. So I'll just two ohms, uh, five ohms, and uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, seven ohms. And I'm gonna say, I'll make this a three, I just wanna make this simple. And this is 12 volt battery. When you combine them in series, the current has only one way to go. There's only one path for the current. So in this case here, we say that the current going through, not across, the current going through R1, R2 and R3, uh, is the same, okay? The 12 volts has to be split between the two, the three, and the seven. So let's see how this works. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out the total resistance. So the total resistance of this whole circuit is basically just R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is two plus three plus seven equals 12 ohms, okay? Now, actually, I'm gonna make this 24, okay. So if you add more resistors in series, the overall resistance will increase. So just imagine if I put another resistor here, this number will be greater, the, the answer will be, the sum will be greater than 12. Okay, now we're gonna find the total current, which is basically the current going through each one. So I'm gonna say total voltage, okay, equals I total, which is basically I, because it's the same throughout the whole circuit, I times R total. In other words, I'm looking at this as if I were to replace this whole circuit with an equivalent simple circuit with a resistance of 12 ohms and a voltage of 24 volts. That's really what it means. And I'm applying V equals I R to just that. So, so I'm gonna say 24, equals I times 12, which means I is equal to two amps. So now I have two amps going through here, two amps here, and two amps here. Well, how much of the tw 24 volts is used up at each resistor? Well, let's see. So if I wanna do the voltage drop across R1, I just do Ohm's law again, I R1, I is the same, so that's why I didn't give it a subscript. That's gonna be two times two, so that's four. It's all proportional volts. And you do the same thing for the other ones. So I'll do the voltage in green. So the voltage here will be four volts. Two times three, six volts. Now to do the last one, you have uh, two options. You can do two times seven, which is not hard to do. That's 14. Or we can just do four plus six is 10 and take that away from the 24. So that's gonna be, uh, what did we say? Uh, 14 volts. So now the other rule, uh, maybe you can write the rules here. So RT is the sum of the Rs, okay? Uh, VT, the total voltage, is the sum of the voltages and I stays constant. <coughs> and as you add more resistors in series, the, uh, the overall resistance, resistance increases and the current has to decrease. And the reason for that is because in V equals IR, this is the total. If I, if I leave the V constant, because that's the voltage of the battery, if R increases, I has no choice but to decrease. So there is that inverse relationship. As long as the 
voltage stays constant. Now we can do the power too. So the total power is just going to be, uh, we can do uh, IV, IV total here. So the I would say was 2 times 24. That should be 48 watts. If you want to find the power in each one here, you do, uh, you do IV. So 2 times 4, that's 8 watts. Uh, two times uh, two times six that's 12 watts and two times 14 is 28 watts and this should add up to uh, to 48 and they do okay now which one is using the most uh, power is the one the that has a higher resistance okay because and you can do that by uh, saying uh, P equals I squared times R and the reason I'm using this because my I is constant, so power is directly proportional to, to the resistance in a series circuit. So in other words, if these three were light bulbs, R3 will be the brightest, okay? All right, so let's do parallel circuits, which are a little different. Okay, now let's look at some... Uh, a different type of combination of resistors and this is going to be parallel and because these resistors look parallel sometimes they don't look parallel but they're still in parallel so we say that they are in parallel if they have the uh, if they share the same voltage and I'm going to explain that in a second okay so I'm going to say that the current that's coming through the from the battery which is the I total, when it comes to this junction, it splits. Some of it goes through R1, and some of it goes through R2. So we can say that the total current is the sum of the currents. Okay, so that's the first rule. We call that the junction rule. Okay, the other rule has to do with voltage. So let's see what's happening to voltage. So we're always gonna talk about, okay, what's happening to current, what's happening to uh, voltage and what's happening to the resistance. Well, if we take a look at all these red axes here, there's no difference between them because there is nothing in between in there. So they are pretty much all connected. All these points here are connected to the positive side of the battery. If I take these circles down here in green, okay, they're pretty much all connected to the negative side of the battery. Now, if I stick a resistor here, that's going to change the game. So, and we'll do that when we do complex circuits. Which means, if the difference between this red and this green mark is 24 volts, the difference between this red and green mark is also 24 volts. So that's the voltage of the battery. And the same thing here. So we can say that V remains constant. Okay? In a parallel branch, that is. Let's see what happens to the resistance. Well, <coughs> uh, okay, I'm going to say, well, the I total, this is a little proof here, is I1 plus I2 plus etc. if you have more. Well, I is V over R. Now, this R here is a special R. That means that, well, if I were to replace this whole circuit with an, an R, and I'll call it the equivalent of this two. This is the voltage of the battery. What would be the value of that REQ equivalent in terms of R1 and R2 and R3? So I'm gonna call this REQ equals V. See, the V is constant, so I'm not gonna write V total. I'm just gonna write V. R1 plus V over R2 plus etc. okay? Now, we have another rule here. So it looks like this. 1 over REQ is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus etc. So that's just a little proof. Now let's think about what happens if I decide to add another resistor here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make this, uh, I don't know, 4 ohms. Okay? And I'm going to call it R3. Will the overall resistance increase or decrease? 
And the way we look at this is that we think about how is our flow of current, how is our current going to change? Is it going to, if our current is going to increase, it means the resistance is going to decrease. And if the uh, current is going to decrease, it means the overall resistance is going to increase. So let's see what happens here. Now, you come in with the current here, the current can go through this branch and this branch. Now, if you open up another branch, your flow has just gotten better, okay? Which means your current went up. So if you add more resistors in the parallel circuit, your overall resistance will decrease, okay? It's counterintuitive, uh, but that's, I'll give you an analogy in a second. And the current will go up. So think about it this way. So let's say, uh, God forbid, there is a, uh, an emergency and we all have to evacuate the, the, the room. And most of us just go right to, try to go right through the front door of this, uh, <coughs> of this classroom. So now we have, let's say, 20 students rushing out the door, okay? Now think of that door as a path, as a resistor. So if they're all trying to get through that door, it's going to be a lot of uh, traffic in there, right? It's going to be congested, right? So now let's just say someone realizes that they're in panic and they say, oh, there's a door in the back. And then some of the students decide, okay, let's use the door in the back. Now, the flow has just gotten better because now we have half the class going here and half going through the back. Well, not even half. It doesn't matter, but you have some of the students going through the back. Now someone says, okay, it's, it's so bad, we're going to get out of the window. So we'll open up another path. So now the flow has just gotten better. Okay. Now, if I put these three in parallel, the equivalent, the combination of all of them will always, and this is important, will always be smaller than the smallest of the three. So when I do my combination, I'm going to find a value that's definitely smaller, smaller than three. Okay. So let's see if we can find the equivalent resistance here. Okay. So I'm going to start with 1 over REQ is 1 over R1, which is 1 over 3, plus 1 over 6, plus 1 over 4. Now, I can do a common denominator, or I can just do this on the calculator. On the calculator, you would just do 3, negative 1. It's the fourth button down from the left, on the left side of your calculator, plus 6, negative 1, plus 4, negative 1. And you have to, once you get that, I got 0.75. Keep in mind, that's 1 over REQ. You have to flip it. And I get 1.33. So REQ is 1.33 ohms. So now, which means if I can replace this circuit with one resistor, it will have a value of one and a third ohms uh, with 24 volts play. That's the equivalent. Okay. Now, if I want to find the total current, I can do this in different ways. I'll show you both ways. So I can do V equals I R, but this is the total current and this is the equivalent resistance. Now, 24 equals the total current times one and a third. So I total equals eighteen amps. So I can also find this total current by finding the current through each one of these branches here, right? Now just a side note here, you can see that since the voltage is the same across each resistor here, and the lower, the lowest resistance will have the more current going through it. Because for a constant voltage, I and R are inversely proportional. So I can find the current going through each one, add them up, and I should end up with 18. So let's see how that works. So V equals I1 times R1. So this is 24 equals I1 times 3. So I1 is going to be equal to 8 uh, amps. Okay, I can do the same thing here. 24 divided by 6 should give me a 4. So now 4 and 8 is 12. And I can do 24 divided by 4. Uh, I should get a 6. So that adds up to 18. So you can do it either way. And it depends on the type of problem you're trying to, uh, to solve. Um, what else we need to do? We need to do, maybe we need to do, uh, 
Yeah, and the other thing we could have, we could do, we can find this REQ by finding the currents. So I'll current through each path. So you don't have to do that inverse uh, formula. So what we could have done here, we could say I1 is eight, I2 I think we say was uh, four, and I3 was uh, six. Okay, so what we could do here, we can say, well, V equals I total R EQ. This is 24 equals 18 times R EQ, and you get R EQ equals 1.33. Now, let's look at power. So let me just write down these numbers here. We got 8 amps here, we got 4 amps, and we got 6 amps. And the voltage is the same. So power uh, is going to be uh, IV, so 8 times 24. 24 times 8, that should be 192 watts. And this is going to be 4 times 24, that's going to be 96 watts. And last one is going to be 6 times 24 equals 144 watts. So you can see that in a parallel circuit, the, resistance, the resistor with the least resistance would dissipate more power. Okay, so in other words, if these were light bulbs, this would be the brightest. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about how we use equipment to measure stuff because we're going to need to do a lab and we have to figure out how to do this, right? So if I want to find total current, I have to catch that current before it splits because now what's going to happen, it's going to split whatever is gone this way is going to split again and you're going to have three currents. So if I want to find the current going through the whole circuit, I have to catch it before it splits. Now remember, I have to use an ammeter in series. So I will have to open this circuit here, or maybe here. I can catch it after it comes back together. So I can put an ammeter right in there, okay? If I want to find the current going through this branch here, I can catch it either here, okay? Open up this wire or open up this wire. And same thing for the other ones. If I want to find the voltage of the battery, all I have to do is go across from here to here. If I want to find the voltage across this R1, I have to put my voltmeter from here to here, across, in other words, in parallel. Okay, now sometimes the, uh, the current gets too high, and if the current gets, current gets too high, it gets very dangerous, and you can start a fire. So to avoid that problem, we have something called a circuit breaker or the, the old days they used to use fuses. Probably some homes still use fuses, but few. So I have to kind of like put a device in here. It's like a sensor. If it senses too much current, it will just shut down the whole thing. And you've probably seen this happening at your house. So at your house, the voltage is 120 volts. And let's say this is the kitchen, and you have your microwave, your toaster, you have your fridge, you have your uh, TV, you have whatever you have in the kitchen, okay? And the circuit can only handle maybe 20 amps. Now, if you keep, uh, so let's say this is the toaster that's on, the microwave is on, the TV is on, and you decided to start the coffee, mach uh, coffee maker, and uh, I don't know, you started to turn on your laptop, as you add in more devices, more uh, appliances to your circuit, you're creating more paths for the current. So which means the current is just going to keep going up as you add more stuff here. So eventually it's going to come to a point where it might reach 20 amps or higher. So what we do, we put a circuit breaker here. That's S here for, it's for circuit breaker, right? So we put a circuit breaker here. And what it is basically is just a device that trips, just shuts off the whole thing if the current goes over 20 amps. With the old fuses, it used to be a fuse in there, so if the current gets too high, 
this wire in there that actually melts and it just cuts the circuit. Uh, with the old fuses, you have to actually go in there and find the fuse and change it. But the circuit breaker, just turn off some of the appliances, turn it back on, and it should, and it should work. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. Yeah, some of the advantages of uh, and disadvantages of series and the resistors and uh, are on page, I think on page 14 or 13, there's a chart in there and the parallel circuits. And it was pretty much just uh, puts all this stuff together, whatever they talked about. Okay, thank you very much.